everyone, Suzanne Harmon here with your Technique Tuesday. After last Friday's question about cuddle minky fabrics and the comments that were pretty negative that a lot of you didn't care for it, too linty, too messy, too slippery, too a lot of things. So I'm here today to maybe get you excited about making a minky quilt. I'm going to teach you some little tips and tricks that'll make a big difference in your life. So first off, I highly recommend for your first one that you purchase a kit. And maybe we can talk to Jeannie if we get some excitement about a deal of the day about some of these kits. And I strongly recommend a small one. So I've bought this little kit here. It's a 27 by 27, uh, a baby quilt. I'm making it for my niece. And even if you don't know someone that's expecting a baby or you don't know a little baby, I still recommend this size and then hang on to it. And before you know it, someone you know is going to be having a baby and what a great gift. And the reason I say this size is because I started off with like a twin size with no instructions and it was a bit of a disaster, but it did turn out. So again, start small and from there it will grow. So what we're going to do is follow me to my laundry room. Okay, I'm here. I didn't make you walk up the hall with me. I didn't want to make you dizzy. Um, what I'm going to do is I am going to put these fabrics right into the dryer. Uh, when they come in the kit, they're generally rolled up with some little rubber bands. So you're going to want to take those off first and then use your box so that you're transporting it without getting lint all over your house. And I'm just going to toss those into the dryer, just like so. And I've just, before I've done it, where I just turned it on and did a regular cotton, but it does get a little hot, so I, I tend to like the, the air dry better. And so I'm going to just do that. Okay, and I'm going to leave these in there for a good 10 minutes. So I'll meet you back at the dryer in a little bit. This is probably the best tip that you'll ever learn about minky. So now when I reach in here and shake these, there's no minky lint going all over the place. And instead it's in my lint trap. So much better place than all over your clothes. You don't want to look like a chia pet. And so again, I'm going to just put these right in the box. And now I'll meet you back at my cutting table. Okay, back again. And something that I just love about the little kits is that it generally includes the backing as well. And so you don't have to purchase a, a large piece of some minky because it's going to be included. And so in this particular kit, it shows a suggested layout. And I suggest that you do it per the instructions again for your first one. So let's take a look see what we've gotten here. This uh, large piece of fabric for the center. I don't have to cut it, so I don't have to worry about any linting there. Let's see what else that we have in here. This uh, large piece of the white with the blue stars is our backing, so that's all good to go. And we notice here that we want two approximate five inch pieces of the white with blue stars. So again, that was included. I think it's all bundled up with my backing there. And so let's take a look at that gray. Now that's some small strips. And on the pattern on the back, it says two and a half inch. Now, generally, these kits come with the strip a little bit larger. And so the first time I made one, when I had this, you're going to see that it's about six inches in width. So let's see what we got here from... Uh, it's just shy of six inches. So the first time I made a minky, silly me, I cut those two and a half inch strips. And so you can imagine that last one, that was just crazy. And I've since become a, a minky 
guru, maybe. I don't know about that one. But since this is six inches, I'm just going to cut it right in half and make it three inches because it's all kind of approximate. And that's another nice thing about these minky quilts. It doesn't have to quite be exact. And this is the part where once we cut, we're now going to have, make sure that you can see that. Okay. So I guess it would help if I have my ruler going the right way. And you can see that it moved a little bit here on my, again, that's why not cutting to that exact two and a half makes this a much simpler process. So I'm going to take a look, make sure that looks how I want it and keeping some good pressure on my ruler. So I'm walking up and now I've cut this strip. And now this is the part where once again, we're going to have lint because as soon as we cut that, it's going to start linting already. And this one doesn't look too bad. Ah, oh, there it is. So what I do is I pick it up, I kind of shake it a little bit and I put it right back in that box. I'm going to pick this one up. Shake it out a little bit, put it right in the box. And then I am going to use my trusty little dust buster. Sorry about the noise. And now none of that's all over my floor. It's not on my clothes. And yes, it's going to continue to lint. So I'm keeping it in the box. And guess where we're going? Right back to the dryer. I'll meet you there again. Okay, back again. Now, obviously I would have finished cutting all my strips, but for purposes of Technique Tuesday, I'm just going to bring this back and I'm just going to transport it just like that. And again, another 10 minutes. So I'll see you back again in 10 minutes. Okay, I ran this for 10 minutes. Let's take a look and see. And this is the telltale sign. You just kind of lift it and shake it and check that out. No lint. Let's see our what we got. Oh yeah. Yep, that's right where we want it. I'll come back and clean that later. But for now, we'll head back to the cutting table. Okay, I'm back at the cutting table. Uh, I just wanted to go over a couple of the suggestions that they give you and then give you a little more information that's not printed on here. Now for cutting, it says uh, for more accurate measuring of the strips, obviously use the acrylic ruler and cut from the reverse side. I've cut from the reverse side and the top. Haven't noticed any difference. I seem to get um, the same accuracy, but you could try it either way. Uh, the next thing is that you're going to be using some spray adhesive. Uh, Jeannie loves the KK100. I've also used this Sulky KK2000. And uh, the very first time that I made the Minky, this is a smaller can, I used a whole can. And I thought, oh my gosh, that sure adds to the expense. And that was a bucket load extra of spray. It just takes a very fine amount, just enough to kind of hold your fabric in place while you pin it. And that's the next thing that I wanted to talk about was pinning. Um, let me just move down here. And it says, um, and it does say that a light spritz of spray is enough to hold the fabric in place. I don't think it said that when I made my first one. We'll just go with that. But it does tell you for sewing, you want to lengthen your stitch to about a 4.0. I generally lengthen it to a 3.5, a 4.0 is okay. Um, but you definitely wanna lengthen your uh, stitch. You wanna use a stretch needle, a 9014. And then it just says, use pins to hold the fabric in place. Well, so I pinned 
not enough. And now when I make my minkies, I pin every inch. And so as you lay it down, and I start in the middle just in case the strip moves, but I pin every inch. So I like to use a magnetic for quick because you're going to pin. And then as you sew, you're gonna be pulling these off. And so I just set that next to me on the machine and kind of toss the pins at it. And it saves you a ton of time if you use a magnetic pin holder. So that's another little suggestion. Hopefully I can uh, in the future teach you a minky class and give you some more information but just this alone, the dryer. Oh, and the reason I use the dust buster, ask me why. Well, the first time I did one, I cut my binding strips and I was using my vacuum cleaner and without even realizing it, cause I was going along with the strips on my mat, I sucked one up in the vacuum cleaner. And as I was sewing the binding on the quilt, I was a strip short and I searched everywhere for that. I had to get some more fabric and cut another piece. And it wasn't until I was dumping out the lint from my vacuum cleaner that I found that strip. I had sucked the whole strip up. So I like to use the dust buster. And did you notice how I kind of shook the strip out and got it out of the way? So you could use your regular vacuum cleaner, especially if you don't have a dust buster. But I kind of switched to that so I made sure that I didn't suck it up. I hope you enjoyed this Technique Tuesday. Again, I look forward to a class in the future, and maybe you too will learn to love Minky. And I'm telling you right now, as soon as you give one to someone, everyone in your family will want one. And then you too will be the Minky Wizard. All for now, Suzanne Harmon out, A1 Vacuum and Sewing.